Welcome back to the Solo Leveling Experience. Last time we witnessed one of the darkest arcs in Solo Leveling. But now we're about to watch Sung Jin Woo gain the Zenkai boost of a lifetime. Like if you thought him being a player was crazy, the power he's about to gain is gonna blow your mind. So without much further ado, let's get into this next arc and talk about how Sung Jin Woo turns into the Black Air Force Monarch. into the violent adventures of Sung Drip Woo, shout out to this video sponsor, Atlas VPN. As we all know, the internet can be a very dangerous place. Nowadays, it feels like just clicking on a link can ruin your whole life. This is why a VPN is a necessity. Having a VPN is like having a squad of security guards protect you while traversing the wilds of the internet. And it just so happens that our sponsor has the best squad on the block. Like you basically got the five Kage watching your back. Atlas VPN provides you with constant protection from malware and the like, tracks any data breaches related to your personal account, and even helps you find the best deals while shopping online. And I know you're probably thinking, but don't you? With all this, will my speed be affected? Well, guess what, fam? Atlas already thought about that and made it so their service allows you to browse at full speed without any worry. But my favorite feature is the one I feel like we all know and love. With Atlas VPN, you can bypass geo restrictions and stream content that normally wouldn't be available to you. For example, I love me my Netflix catalog. But Netflix France is a different breed. They got Yu Yu Hakusho, Avatar The Last Airbender, Cowboy Bebop, freaking totally spies. They even have Spectacular Spider-Man, that amazing Spider-Man show that I thought got wiped off the face of the earth. So people, stop playing games and get with Team Atlas. They have a fire deal going on where you can get the next three years of your service for just $1.99 per month. That's 82% off their normal price, fam. But the deal is not gonna last long, so you gotta move quick. Check the link in the description below to get in on this offer. And thank you, Alice, once again for sponsoring this video. So as I said in my last video, this is technically two different arcs, but the first arc is so short that I just thought, why make it into one video by itself? I might as well just combine the two, you know? So the first arc technically is the Jinho Strike Squad arc, but I personally like to call it the Ultimate Finesse arc and we're gonna find out soon. So this arc begins with Sung Jin Woo meeting Jin Ho outside of a dungeon. Remember how before they talked about how they were gonna join forces and go into different dungeons and make mad bread and shit because Jin Ho wants to make a guild and Sung Jin Woo wants to make money? They're now carrying out that plan, but as you know, they can't just go into dungeons by themselves, so they are paying people 3 million won each just to wait outside. Yo, regardless of what their true motives are, Sung Jin Woo and Jin Ho are doing God's work right now. You mean I get dungeon raid pay without actually going into the dungeon and risking my life? Copy, say less, I'm in. But at first these guys are skeptical. They're like, what are these guys really gonna do? Even if they're strong, it's two people going into a dungeon by themselves. They're probably gonna die. But only after being in the dungeon for about a few minutes, Jin Ho and Sung Jin Woo just pop out and they're like, all right, we about to hop in the next one. So everyone's shook because they're not line because the dungeon closes so they're just like you know what copy heard you you obviously know what you're doing we are in for the long run but all this sparks the attention of the white tiger guild one of the strongest guilds in south korea specifically a recruiter named mr An song min so this guy starts looking into jin woo and jin ho but mostly jin woo he he kind of cares about jin ho but only because his father is like the leader of that construction company but he notices that jin woo survived the double dungeon he somehow survived the whole Huang dung suk incident and also came out alive and he suspects that he's the reason he's the person that killed kang Chic. So he's like, nah, bro. Everybody's missing out on this nigga. This nigga's definitely reawakened and he's strong as fuck. So he's like, you know what? I'm gonna go and recruit this dude. I'm gonna pay him double what whatever he's getting paid right now. Meanwhile, in another dungeon somewhere, some Jin Woo levels up to level 40. But shit gets different this time because he gets a notification talking about a job change quest. So he looks at it and is like, okay, interesting. Not gonna do that now, but I will hold this in my back pocket for later. He comes to the dungeon, he runs to An Song Min. This guy's like, hey man, I'm from the White Tiger Guild, one of the strongest guilds in South Korea. Come back to the office, I wanna recruit you, I have an offer you cannot refuse. So Jin Woo follows Song Min to the office and he's like, hey man, I'm, a, I'm willing to give you double of what Jin Ho's paying you to join the White Tiger Guild. What do you say? And Jin Woo's like, all right, how 
much is this building worth? Sungmin is confused. He's like, what, what are you talking about? What, what, are you, what are you trying to get at? I don't understand. So then Sung Jin Woo reveals that Jin Ho is offering the building that his father is going to build for his guild, which is worth 30 billion won. So to double that, this guy is going to have to give him the White Tiger building, which is worth 50 billion won. Yo, the audacity with this man, bro. But hey, negotiations, fam. That's how it is. So obviously Sung Min is a little shook because he can't offer that. Like he's like, I could talk to my high up so we could see what we could do but then Sung Jin was like ah you know what it ain't gonna work out so he gets up to leave but before he leaves he goes invisible he's like yo yo by the way who told you about me son and this guy's like yo I did some research but the moment he says that he gets a cut on his cheek and Sung Jin was like hey man don't tell anyone shit about what just happened today if anyone asks I do not exist and Song Min immediately gets a picture he's like hey you know what you do what you gotta do fam if anybody asks, I don't know Sung Jin Woo. But after that, Sung Jin Woo's like, yeah, I'm gonna continue buying out these dungeons. And Sung Bin is like, hey man, can you like not? Because we also need to use the dungeons. And Sung Jin Woo's like, all right, we can make a deal. I'll sell you my dungeons for 300 million won each. And Sung Min is like, hey, yo, bro, that's mad money of, of dungeon by itself. We are, you already get enough resources to make up about 200 million won. We're paying way above what we should be paying. I can't give you that. And then Sung Jin was like, all right, I'll do 200 million won. And that's what I peeped how this man finessed this expert. This man gave him an obscene price to start off with. The price that he knew he was going to get a no for. He didn't think the person was actually going to give him this money. And then the guy just went 100 million won lower. And now he's getting 600 million won for six gates that he didn't even plan on going into. Before all this, him and Jin Ho spoke and he was like, hey, I have plans for tomorrow. We may not even use these dungeons, but keep them reserved just in case. My man Sung Jin Woo not only got an offer from the White Tiger Guild, but he left that shit after threatening the guy who tried to recruit him with 600 million won. The ultimate finesse. You see why I call that arc this name. Anyway, Jin Woo dips and Song Min is just left there thinking, damn, I really need that kid on our squad because he is cool as shit. So our boy Sung Jin Woo is coming up in life. He started off in the first chapter being an Erek. Now he's getting crazy ass off to join prestigious guilds in his country. I'm thinking about it now. Our boy's low-key rich rich because think about it. He also has the in-game gold from being a player that he can use for a shop and shit to just buy whatever. So he's saving money there. Nah, Sung Jin Woo is low-key loaded right now, but he doesn't. He probably doesn't even notice it because he's too busy trying to level up and fight these monsters. I mean, he still has an S-rank hunter after his ass. But now we get into the second arc of this video. The birth of the Shadow Monarch. Arc. So Sun Jin Woo did puzzle to the portal where he has to do his whole job change quest in sweats, bro. It's funny because you would think in epic moments like these, the drip would be on point. But nah, my boy's just, you know, wearing wearing his hoodie and, you know, some sweatpants. He's like, I'm trying to get a workout and I'm trying to do this job quest real quick, go to sleep and then live the rest of my life. I understand it, though. I feel like I would do the same thing. So Sun Jin Woo enters and just like any job advancement quest, the dungeon has a bunch of stipulations he has to follow. For one, he can't use potions. He can't leave until he's done with the dungeon. So so if he dies, he dies. And it turns out he didn't finish his daily quest. So he really has to do this on time or else he's going to send to the penalty zone mid job advancement quest. And I'm sure he doesn't want that. So he starts finding the night mobs in the area. But because his dagger does not work with their armor, he has to use the hands and people. I don't know about y'all, but hand Sung Jin Woo is best Sung Jin Woo. Because this shit is so raw and there is so much detail with every drawback and every punch. It looks so fucking cool. Like I used to draw, as you guys can tell from my move mic as you guys can tell from my tablet so seeing this made me want to pick up my tablet and try to draw at least a fraction as good as this person anyway Sung Jin Woo literally punches his way through until he gets to the boss this fire ass monster was going to become the goat later named Igris the Red now upon my first read on stream it was cool seeing him but people lost their minds when I was reading it on stream, bro. Like the chat was losing it. They were like, oh, Igris, that's the boy. And I didn't understand it. But now that I read solo leveling once already, I know exactly what y'all were going through. My heart was beating out of its chest when I was reading this part again. I was like, oh, shit. 
is the nigga Igris, the A rank boss monster. Oh yeah, by the way, Igris is definitely like A rank. So this, this fight's about to be real hard, but lit as fuck. So the boy Igris starts going in on Sung Jin Woo. And I'm not gonna hold you. My man is rocking his shit, bro. And Sung Jin Woo once again realizes he can't use his dagger. So he throws it away and is like, all right, I don't know if this is gonna work out, but I can only use hands right now. And people, what happens next? Holy shit. Igris takes off his cape, throws his sword to the side, throws all of his weapons, and deadass gets ready to fight Sung Jin Woo just with the hands. The reason why this freaked me out a little bit was because this is the first time we've seen a monster make a choice like this. But bro, I lost my shit once again. When I read this the first time and I saw this, I was already like, whoa, this is fucking epic. But when I read it again, my god, bro, I... Jesus, I felt like I was gonna cry. Like, I don't even know why. So just off the hands, we start going off and Igris is rocking this dude again, bro. Like to give y'all an idea of how strong Igris is, Igris gave Sung Jin Woo the same feeling that he had back in the double dungeon. So think about that. Sung Jin Woo getting that feeling now that he's like B rank at least, kind of crazy. This man even leaves Sung Jin Woo thinking that he might die, bro. But right when things seem dire, my man pulls out his dagger and is like, no, I'm not dying today. And stabs my man Igris in the eye. Then he starts going off. And this scene, once again, this desperation that Sung Jin Woo shows in these scenes where he's really trying to win, this is what I live for. This, it just makes the moment feel so real and this so hard to not get caught up in the energy when you see those panels of Sung Jin Woo just screaming, trying to finish the boss off but thankfully he wins and he dead ass chalks it up to luck he's like damn bro i'm not even gonna hold you i did not beat that dude off a of skill off a of power off of nothing that man beat the shit out of me but thanks is when he gets some dope ass items including a skill called commander's touch now one thing i noticed i feel like the only time sung jin woo gets truly happy is when he gains new items or new skills that have to do with his new powers because he always seems so serious like i'm talking bruce wayne levels of serious but he goes from bruce wayne to like like Wally West when he gets dope ass items. The dude is so happy looking at his shit. Second thing, Commander's Touch is a fire ass skill. It's basically the force to give you an idea. However, the things that he can pull with it is completely based off of how strong he is and how strong the skill is. So Son Jin Woo is feeling good, you know, but he noticed he got a Hearthstone, which means this dungeon may not be over. Then the moment he thinks that, a timer shows up and the system is like, hey man, good job clearing step one. Welcome to the actual quest. You have to survive for as long as you can. And then a bunch of portals open up and a shit ton of mages and knights just come swooping in. Now, Sung has very little HP and mana left. On top of that, he can't heal himself because of the whole dungeon restraints. So he does the best that he can. He even uses his camouflage skill. But these mages can sense the drip. So they start jumping his ass, son. And as he's getting beat, he gets hit with the PTSD of the double dungeon, but it gets even worse this time because he gets visions of his friend saying, hey, Sung Jin Woo, it's okay. Stop trying so hard. Then at the height of the tension, he gets a vision of his younger self looking at him saying, you were the weakest hunter of all time. Why are you trying so hard, bro? Just stop. Aren't, shouldn't you be happy that you got this far? And I feel like all this is personifying his fear of becoming weak again because of how much people did him dirty back when he was the weakest hunter of all time. And I like that they're giving us this because it shows that Sung Jin Woo is not just becoming some inhumane monster who just cares about getting stronger. He's still struck by that fear of getting shafted because he's weak. But y'all remember, he didn't finish his daily quest. So right when he's about to get yeeted, like officially killed, he gets transported to the penalty zone. The daily quest thing actually came in handy this time. Saved his fucking life. He should be thankful. So Sung Jin Woo gets up and he's like, bro, I am lucky as fuck. Fuck. Then he starts healing up, you know, when he makes the most gamer decision that he's ever made. He's like, why waste my time running away from the centipede when I'm pretty sure I could fight them now? I'm going to sit here and level up so that when I get back to the whole job advancement dungeon, I am ready. So he grinds for the full four hours, fam. Then right when it's time to go back, he buys the item Night Killer from his own shop. Then he gets sent to the dungeon and people, he starts going in, fam. Like he starts beating these guys like they owe him money. Like, well, I, I would beat them like this too if they started jumping my ass for no reason. But 
after fighting the knights, he realizes the knights are not the problem. The mages are the one controlling them. So he starts going off, murdering the mages, using his commander's touch to crush knights' heads. Then right when the mages are on their like last leg, they summon a knight golem, try and beat him. And he's like, bitch, I am sung drip woo. You gotta give him my fucking job advancement. Then he takes out all the enemies. The system congratulates him and is like, hey, good job, bro. For all this, you shall become a necromancer. Now, at first, Sung Jin Woo's like, wait, 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 what the fuck? I've been doing so much assassination type shit. I didn't put anything in my intelligence stat. And if it, for anybody who does not know, usually intelligence is used for your magic power when it comes to RPGs. In soul leveling, it is directly related to your magic powers. So he's tight, but he's also like, hey, maybe I could use this to my advantage because as a necromancer, I can summon an army of the dead. And technically, I wouldn't have to do anything. I can just use my army to do my work for me. But he's worried because if he summons an army of the dead, their level would be stagnant. They wouldn't be able to level up like he would. But then the system's like, you gain extra points for clearing all this extra shit because he not only survived, he killed everything there. So the system's like, we're sorry. After collecting the rest of your points, we realize you're not a necromancer. You are the Lord of Shadows or Monarch of Shadows, depending on where you're reading soul leveling. This buff. You thought Song Jin Woo was broken now? This buff allows him to extract the shadows of dead beings, which means monsters and humans are included. Take the shadows of dead beings and make them his soldiers. And it's not even like he only gets to keep them for that short amount of time. He gets to stock them up like they're fucking Pokemon. So this dude extracts the shadows of all the knights and the mages in the area, and he just gets to keep them. My man doesn't even just have a Blicky anymore, bro. He got the whole nuke in his hand. So after extracting the shadows of the knights, the mages he goes to igris and he's like you know i need you bro so he tries to extract it once but it failed because extraction is relying on how strong you are compared to the target and also how much time has passed since the target has died so he tries it a second time fails once again then he paused and is like bro look the throne you were protecting it's empty stop protecting that throne and protect who's in front of you and then he tries it again and igris pops out bro but his full name is igris the red but sung jin woo's like nah bro your name is just igris this is the beginning of the sung jin woo i almost said nakama but i you know what fuck that this is the beginning of the sung drip pirates and sung jin woo was the captain and igris is for sure zoro not only because he's the second person that got recruited but because this dude gives off zoro energy you're gonna see when he actually uses him igris is basically the starter pokemon and with that the arc ends with the dope ass scene of all the shadows bowing before their lord and savior sung drip woo the black air force monarch Oh, one specific thing I completely forgot to mention. This is very important. He has to assign a command to whenever he summons his, his soldiers. So he assigns it to the term Arise. And that shit hit the solo leveling fandom like a fucking truck, bro. I remember when I first read Arise on stream, people lost their shit. The whole chat in unison typed in Arise in all caps. Like we were in a fucking cult. When he says it, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. The, even the word bubble is fire as fuck. But like, I've never seen people like attach themselves to one word in a fandom so hard like with a rise in solo leveling it's crazy but the next arc we're gonna get into this arc must have got too happy because the next arc just hops right into the darkness because shit gets crazy so we're gonna watch as sung jin Woo enters his first red gate and goes through a dungeon with the white tiger guild for the first time in the next arc the red gate arc and if you want to be here when that drops and get notified, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Shout out once again to AlexVPN for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check the link below for a huge 82% discount on your first three years. That's only $1.99 a month, so calling it a steal would be an understatement. But that is it for the video, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to my patrons. Appreciate y'all so much for your monthly donations. And special shout out to my a rank patrons, the guys who give even more each month. Third Dynasty, Nello Lobo, Dylan Mason, Blake Roberts, Broken Rosary, Daniel Gonzalez, Victor Garcia, Mustard Gas, Zach Haji, Curtis Clarkson, Dark Titan, Jody Boy, Jakari Scott, and Sugi. Appreciate you guys for the extra help each month. And with that, be easy, stay lit, stay healthy out there, Black Lives Matter, and don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, fam.